Well, it's it's actually going to happen. I'm going to cut mortises today. Uh, actually, I already cut one mortise. <clears throat> um, that took forever. Uh, it doesn't really take, I don't know, I guess that long really to cut the mortise itself, but <clears throat> to do it right, I guess it does. <clears throat> All the finishing and cleanup work and everything. And uh, there's absolutely no way I'm going to get through this whole mortise uh, and keep this video short. So uh, I will not film the whole thing. But I just wanted to give an overview of how I cut the how I cut the uh, the mortise, and well, we'll go from there. Uh, the technique that I use <clears throat> now. Uh, I learned from Paul Sellers. Uh, if you haven't checked out his site, it is uh, a wonderful site for all things woodworking. And you can pick up a lot of tips and tricks and maybe some projects or whatnot. Uh, the guy's been doing woodworking for five decades. Well, more than that now, but over 50 years of woodworking experience behind that guy so when I need to learn how to do something or learn how to do something better I just go to his uh, go to his YouTube channel and figure it out uh, or he also has a uh, a website that he does a lot of blogs on things a lot of things that he doesn't uh, shoot videos for but anyways I learned this technique from him and uh, <clears throat> I've cut quite a few mortises this way. This is a six by six timber, so it takes, you know, uh, most of the mortise and tenon that you do in woodworking isn't this large. This is almost more of a timber framing um, scenario, but, you know, I want a nice stout uh, workbench, so. Gonna have some big mortise and tenons. So, anyways, uh, let's get to it. So, I'm gonna start at one end, all the way at the end, uh, up near my my line. Um, if you want to watch the layout and everything like that, just go to Paul Sellers' video uh, on this, and you can find uh, he does a much better job of uh, showing layout of this and it's very quick and it's uh, a better quality video and everything like that um, but I'm just gonna start right here at the end I've already laid everything out uh, as you may or may not be able to see and uh, I'm, I'm laid out a regular tenon through tenon here and up at the top which you can't see uh, I laid out for a haunched mortise uh, to receive a haunched tenon and that all makes sense uh, when we get to that point. So I just kind of wanted to bring you along and show you what I what progress I'm making with the bench. Uh, I literally only have one other. I have one leg done, um, mortised up. This is my second leg. So here we go. So I got this too off of his recommendation. It's a Thorex Seven Twelve. Uh, 36 millimeter inch and a half made in England this is another one of those tools like this guy that you can only find um, they only make them in England they ship them in from England so you go to that I think it's the big big red box store on um, Amazon or YouTube or not YouTube Amazon or yeah, I'm pretty sure it's on Amazon. Maybe it's eBay. Uh, but it's one of those two. Anyway, this is the one you're going to find uh, in the United States. That is not the same knife as this, as you can tell. One, well, it doesn't really look like it in the video, but this one's much bigger. Um... It's much wider 
It's a little bit wall. It's a little bit wider. It's a little bit longer. It's a little heftier. It's a little thicker. Uh, it's easier to fold this thing down uh, than this one, which I'm going to leave it folded down because I hardly ever use it. I use this as a backup. Plus they sell them in the United States all over the place. This booger is the one you want. Um, it, the other one, ha it, it feels like the blade kind of goes this way and kind of crooks up. Uh, well, I'm not going to show you that, but <clears throat> this is a mortising video. But anyway, this is the guy that you want. So just look for the Stanley, small Stanley knife like that. It'll have two different edges on it. And it'll also have the solid black uh, end knob there. <clears throat> so without further ado, let's chop this mortise. I've noticed that the first couple of more to, first couple of chops are the most important because that's what the rest of your chops are going to follow. So I just move it up about a sixteenth to an eighth. <clears throat> Don't get not getting uh, too ambitious here or anything. Just moving it up and. You can go right up until you hear it. You'll hear it like thump, and you'll hear it like it's in a dead spot. And uh, you know it's at the bottom of the hole. That's where you stop. Uh, if you do go any further, you're just compressing the fibers of the wood. You're not doing, you're not cutting anything. Uh, you're just wedging. <clears throat> um, this chisel is just one that I actually I borrowed it from work. Uh, just because I didn't want to, I don't know, I, I borrowed it from work to show the guys at work how a chisel is supposed to be properly sharpened. And I, I don't know, I, I've been kind of uh, using it a lot lately. The last two projects I've made, cutting large mortise and chisel, mortise and tenon like this, I've used this chisel. And it's a Buck Brothers. Uh, it's got a nice stout handle on it. I love it. Compared to, this is a three-quarter inch chisel, and this is my uh, Stanley uh, Sweetheart uh, chisel. The new seven, well, not new, the re uh, revisited, so to speak, Stanley 750 series chisel. Uh, but you can see it's the look at the look at the difference in the handles, right? But this is a socket. This is a socket style chisel, so I can I can pop the handle off here, and I'm going to end up making a new set of handles for all of these. But um, you can see the blades longer on this, but look at the size and difference of the handles. Anyway, so I like this. Uh, I actually have to make. One handle, um, I borrowed the handle off of this one to put it on to my other three quarter, but it snapped. So the handles that those sweethearts are made out of are not, I mean, I beat the hell out of my, my chisels. <clears throat> so they take a beating. Uh, but that shouldn't matter as far as I'm concerned. It's a great it's a great chisel. I don't know. Um, I can't really speak that well of the handles though. But I'm gonna make some, some of my own handles. Uh, I got a lathe and well I'm a machinist, so I have a hunt, you know, I got a, a whole bunch of uh, metal lathes, but I also have a wood lathe in my carpentry shop at work. So I'm going to make me a couple of handles for the whole set eventually. And I got a, probably a dozen other chisels that need to be, um, I need to finish restoring, put an edge on them and make a handle for those as well. So um, I don't know if you can not can or can't see, but I'm, I'm I've got the bevel towards me 
and so the bevel goes the bevel faces the direction that you're traveling so in this case it's going towards me once we get to the other end and we're halfway through we'll turn it around and travel the other direction and that'll basically give me a, you know close to a flat bottom hole mortise hole You don't want to lever out the excess wood right away, but now's a good time to start. <coughs> this is this is a uh, Doug fur that I'm dealing with. I live in Washington, so this is what's readily available. So it acts pretty spongy and very well soft woody like. And by that I mean um, it doesn't leave her out quite the same as um, a lot of other woods that I deal with. I mainly deal with cherry and mahogany and most you know hardwoods and stuff. This is the well, I've dealt with Doug Fur too before, but it's not, it's not that, uh, I don't know, it's not that enjoyable to chop a mortise. Just because it's, uh, it's so soft. It's easy, but... <clears throat> it's, uh... It's just kind of different. And don't hit yourself. Um, and a few, I'll show you a few tips that I, tricks that I do that maybe you've never seen before. Which is kind of the point of this whole thing. We've all seen somebody hand chop a mortise. Uh, but when I get to the end, because like, like right now, I can't, I can't even lever this wood out because it's just jam-packed in there. It's that soft wood crap that I'm talking about. The issues that you have to deal with with soft wood. You just want to make sure that you're vertical and, you know, don't be this way or that way. Uh, you want to keep your chisel vertical. You know, this side should be straight up and down which probably doesn't look like it in the video but it's straight up and down right there and it's going to follow right it's going as you were you know if you're looking at it like this it's going to slope down the hole as it this bevel forces it to travel in that direction so <clears throat> If you find it's too hard to cut or chop sometimes, just take a smaller, take a smaller, uh, smaller cut. And sometimes I find it where it's like one, like it's starting to twist on me. It'll hit a knot or a grain in one direction or the other. This is my actual nicest, uh, my nicest piece of, uh, lumber that I have for a leg. Uh... So, it's not really twisting all that much, but if you get an irregular grain, it's all over the place, you, you may, uh, or something, some undulation in the middle of the wood that will make your, make your chisel twist. It's not you, it's the grain. Um, just try, I try to twist my handle in the opposite direction. Uh, usually that helps. <clears throat> Like I said, you can hear it, and I'm already that far into the into the hole, and I'm not even halfway done with it yet. <clears throat> so even if I was off a little bit right here, it's going to immediately, as soon as I hit it, 
it's going to immediately fall right into the line that the rest of them have been uh, producing. He might end up with a little, a little, uh, a little mark on the edge, but so far I've hit it on the mark every time. It's quite nice. It's nice working with wood that's not all jacked up with knots like the other three legs. I'd show you, but my computer's kind of sitting on it. There it goes. See, it's starting to twist, so I just twist against. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But then the next one, it won't do it. So <clears throat> now that I know I'm twisting, I'm just ready for it. And it started to twist that way, so I just gave it a gentle tug the other direction, and I'm and that's it. Um, now this is where I get a little bit different than most people. <clears throat> I'll just take, I'll take this and I go sideways. Remember that it's going to, it's going to force the chisel that way. So I start off on the other edge of the hole, or at least on that side of the half that half of the hole and then I just go in and I break because it won't pop out if you start levering it you will bend um, your chisel and I'm not trying to bend uh, expensive chisels this one's not mine either but it's uh, it's not one that I want to ruin <clears throat> um, so I chop down like that and then I come in, in this case, this is a three-quarter inch, uh, three inch mortise that I'm chopping. So I'm chopping with a 5 8 chisel. And be careful when you do this, obviously. Uh, you don't want to stab yourself in the heart. <laughs> but no, realistically, it's a pretty safe procedure. It's actually safer than, uh, than most other techniques I've been using. But I just double-handed, kind of... After I've chopped it in half, kind of come in and just ride along the bottom of that hole. And it's it's going down at an angle like that anyway. This probably looks terrible on camera. But I assure you, it's very safe. <clears throat> but I'll do this from, from time to time to get it cleaned out and... Kind of give that waste a little bit somewhere, you know, somewhere to go. <clears throat> I'll try to get through this one line and then we'll stop the video. So you hear it, you can hear that thump when it's down. This one's like, okay, it's down at the bottom. Let's go to the next one. And that's the nice thing about working with hand tools. This is such an, an enjoyable, for me, an enjoyable process. Much better than, you know, a, a mortising, square mortising chisel on the end of a drill press or something. Or having to fire up a big loud router that's going all over the place trying to cut your mortises. I can just sit here and listen to some music. If you're curious, a lot of times, yeah, I listen to country music, old style country music, but uh, I also tend to, more frequently than not, <clears throat> I listen to uh, traditional Japanese music when I do my woodworking. Uh, maybe that's a little odd, but that's what I like. Kind of puts me in the right mood, I guess. And 
it goes really I mean, pretty quickly, I guess, when, when you're not sitting there talking to the camera or trying to video everything, it goes pretty quickly. But you don't want to, you don't want to, uh, bend your chisels, mess up your chisels, or anything like that. That's why I always continue to go that route. <clears throat> and I wouldn't recommend trying to take the whole thing either. Just kind of go like halfway down your, uh, your waist and then go the rest of the way. Just easier. And be careful. So if you're like me, <clears throat> your chisels are super sharp, and you can chop mortises all day and still shave with them. Yep. So be careful around your chisels, they will slice you open. But if you're watching this, you probably already know that. <clears throat> Chopping your first mortise ever was I remember that I remember that. It was it was pretty cool. In this style, anyway. Before I did, I did the common, the common way of drilling a hole through, and this this way I have found to be much more accurate. You don't have to pare down the sides because when you chop it like this, your sides are already automatically the width of your chisel. Um, when you drill through. Unless you're using some kind of drill guide or something like that, which you're not going to have in my shop. Um, I just, it's not that I'm against owning them, I just don't own one. Um, I'll probably make a little, once the bench is together, I'll make a guide block uh, for my. <clears throat> for my uh, bracing bit, but uh, I'm still going to drill everything. I'm not going to use a power tool. I so said I've got a couple of power tools, not power tools, but I mean, really, like the only thing I ever use is my drill for my little screw gun <clears throat> for stuff around the house that I don't want to use, but or don't want to take forever doing. I like doing hand using hand tools for things like this because this is what I enjoy doing and I don't mind taking a long time to do something when it's enjoyable. You want it to last. You want the experience to last. Yeah, sure, you want to get done with your project, but you also want to enjoy the process. But, you know, when it comes to doing yard work per se, right? Nobody likes, I mean, it, it provides, I guess, a certain level of um, enjoyment <clears throat> doing yard work and such, but and I started going crooked on me, but kind of let you zone everything out. But for me, it's taking up time that, you know, I could be in here doing this. So, it's, uh, for me, things like yard work or whatever. Of course, I've got gas-powered trimmers and chainsaws and 
what have you, uh, for doing the work that I don't want to do and don't want to take the time to do. But when it comes to this type of stuff, all day with hand tools. I love it. So we're almost, almost through. Get this out there one handed. And we're that far down in it, which is about well, two inches. Alright, so we're two inches. Well, you can't see it, but we're two inches in. Almost, well, exactly. Uh, so this is a six inch, so I'm still going to have, by the time I get through, I'm still going to have roughly an inch and a half. Um, in the middle to chop through so I'll chop through this way I'm gonna finish coming this way and then I'll go back that way <clears throat> I'll flip it over do the same thing and then uh, I'll probably come back to this side and make a pass this way flip it over and make a pass um, from the other side and I'll be I'll break through and it'll be a through tenon, just clean it up, or through mortise, I'll clean it up and it'll be ready to fit a tenon to. Um, yeah, it's going, I'm going to be chopping mortises for, I probably, I will have, I would have to literally chop mortises all night, all, all the rest of today, all day tomorrow, and probably all week. Uh, in the evenings, like probably one mortise, one mortise a night <clears throat> uh, to get this done and be ready to cut tenons next weekend. <clears throat> this is just a long process. It's a lot longer than they make it out to be, especially when you have like today, I didn't get, I had to mow the yard or, uh, Mo, I say mo. I had to, I had to weed whack the yard. But it's a big ass yard, and I had to get that done this morning. So I woke up early, got that knocked out, and then started chopping mortises uh, this morning. But it's already like seven fifteen in the evening, <clears throat> and still chopping mortises. I'm only on my third one, so. There you have it. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them down below. And yeah, stand by, stand by. Chop some more mortises. Friends and family, I love you, as always. Mama. And uh, everybody else, peace.